we tend to think that the most heinous crimes and murders all happened in our modern era. But unfortunately, human beings have always been capable of tragic and horrifying acts. In the late 1800s, a city in Western France, Poitiers, was home to one such crime. And if you've spent any amount of time on the internet, then it's likely you've not only heard of this crime, but also seen photos of it. Today, we'll be covering this story of Blanche Monnier and the years of torment and isolation she suffered at the hands of her family. In 1879, Emil Monnier, Blanche's father and the head of the Monnier family, passed away, leaving his wife Louise alone with her two children, Marcel and, of course, Blanche. Madame Monnier was well known throughout the city of Poitiers for her generosity and was even given an award for the Committee of Good Works for her contributions to the city. However, behind closed doors, she was a strict matriarch. Her strict parenting was done with her family's influence, power, and wealth in mind, and it began to pay off. Marcel graduated from law school and was ever the doting and diligent son to his mother and even went on to hold public office. Blanche also grew into a respectable and reputable young woman. She was a joyous woman who was described as having a wealth of beautiful hair and big, brilliant eyes. Now, between her good looks and her family's fortune, she had her pick of any man in the town and was more than capable of using that to further her family's influence while having Blanche get married to a wealthy suitor from a powerful family. While having Blanche get married to a wealthy suitor from a powerful family was definitely Madame Monnier's intention, her daughter had different plans. When she was 25 years old, Blanche met an older gentleman to whom she was instantly and intensely attracted, while he was an attorney, which was definitely a position that could bring wealth and power. This man was unfortunately not very successful, afraid of her mother's inevitable disapproval and scorn. Blanche decided to keep their relationship through town rumors. The news of the affair eventually made its way back to Madame Monnier, who of course disapproved of the relationship and demanded her daughter end it. Blanche refused and in fact even made plans to marry the poor lawyer, which she shared with her friends. Time passed and the day of the scandalous marriage grew nearer. But suddenly Blanche was no... After a few days after Blanche had gone missing, the public began to grow restless and questions were raised at the rest of the Monnier family until Madame Monnier was forced to make a statement. She claimed that Blanche had succumbed to insanity and instead of cruelly sending her off to a dirty and vicious insane asylum... They would instead keep her at the house where she could be kept in comfort and her every need could be attended to, with the Monnier's generous and benevolent reputation. The people of Poyers eagerly accepted the truth and moved on. Unbeknownst to everyone else, Blanche was in store for a horrible fate. Days turned into months turned into years and Blanche continued to stay out of the public eye and the people of Poyers slowly forgot about her. That was until one of the neighbors was out walking late at night a full eight years after Blanche's original confinement. While walking by the Monnier's house, the neighbor reportedly heard wailing coming from a small window to the attic of the house. The wailing was definitely from a woman and according to a newspaper article. The voice said, Oh God, when will they set me free? Why am I imprisoned here? I am suffering the tortures of the damned. The cries immediately worried the man and the following day he marched up to the Monnier's stoop and started questioning the family about Blanche's safety. Madame Monnier quickly assuaged their neighbor, assuring him that Blanche's mental state had steeply declined and that had led her to hallucinate and become delusional. And Marcel, who now held a prominent position in public office, vouched for his mother. The neighbor saw no reason to distrust them and left the house satisfied with her answer. Following this, Marcel quickly boarded up the small window in the attic, not only keeping Blanche from being heard or seen, but barring off the last remaining source of sunlight she had plunging her into darkness for the next 12 years. During her time in confinement, Blanche's would-be fiancé, the poor lawyer, suddenly passed away. With his death, the last major thread tying Blanche's story to the public was severed, and most people forgot about her. After caring for her for the entirety of Blanche's confinement, the old maid in charge of tending to Blanche's needs and health retired. In her place, they hired two young women who had no clue what horror they were getting themselves into, when the two women were finally able to see Blanche for themselves, they were completely appalled by the horrific sight that lay before them. One of the women was so disturbed by Blanche's condition that in 1901, she wrote an anonymous message to the general attorney. The letter read, Attorney General, I have the honor to inform you of an exceptionally serious occurrence. 
I speak of a spinster who was locked up in Madame Monnier's house, half-starved, and living on a putrid litter for the past 25 years, in a word, in her own filth. The authorities were shocked by the letter and rushed to the Monnier's house as soon as they could. They were met with resistance from Madame Monnier and Marcel, but eventually they pushed their way past and burst into the attic. Nothing could have prepared them for what they were going to find. Locked away in the attic was what little remained of the once beautiful and joyous Blanche Manier. Now 50 years old and a little more than skin and bones, one of the policemen who was there later recounted the event, stating, The unfortunate woman was lying completely naked on a rotten straw mattress. All around her was formed a sort of crust made from excrement, fragments of meat, vegetables, fish, and rotten bread. We also saw oyster shells and bugs running across Blanche's head. The air was so unbreathable, the odor given off by the room was so rank, that it was impossible for us to stay any longer to proceed with our investigation. Both Marcel Manier and his mother were immediately arrested, and Blanche was rushed to a hospital. Once she arrived, they discovered the woman was only 55 pounds. It was here at the hospital that one of the most haunting photos in existence was taken, showing the unbelievably underweight and dirty Blanche Monnier. Her face is as if carved in stone, a skin tightly drawn over the finely molded bone structure. Her body was white and bloodless arms and limbs are incredibly thin. Unfortunately, Blanche was not only subject to physical illness. Isolation had taken a toll on her mind, and not only would she largely lose the ability to speak, but she would later be diagnosed with anorexia nervosa schizophrenia, exhibitionism, and coprophilia, after some time spent in a local mental institution. Blanche would make a full physical recovery, but she was never able to recover mentally and would die only a decade later due to her ailments. As for her horrid family members, I'm sad to report that they never faced any true consequences. Madame Monnier was in her 70s at the time of her arrest and was suffering from heart disease. 15 days after entering custody, Madame Monnier passed away without ever facing trial or consequences for the living hell she put her daughter through. As for Marcel Monnier, he was able to use his position of power as well as extreme technicalities to avoid any kind of punishment. This included citing his nearsightedness as preventing him from seeing the true state that his sister was living in, as well as claiming that if she really wanted to, Blanche could have left the house at any. Marcel was unfortunately acquitted and was let loose to return home to his job, mansion and family without facing any consequences for helping his mother kidnap and abuse his sister. Not only did he face no consequences, but with his mother's death and Blanche being indisposed, Marcel became the sole heir to his family's wealth and estate. This case is one of the biggest examples of how the justice system can fail. And all we can hope for is that if this would have happened with our modern laws, that Marcel would have had to pay the price for his part in his sister's imprisonment. While it seems most obvious that Madame Manier kept her daughter hidden away due to greed and her desire to keep Blanche from marrying the lawyer, why did she continue to keep Blanche locked up after the lawyer's death? Was she in too deep at that point to risk letting Blanche back into society, or had she driven Blanche so insane by that point that she saw no reason to give up her charade? Some online have pointed out that Madame Monnier's devout Christianity might be to blame for her extreme reaction to Blanche's plans to marry. This would also align with the fact that there were supposed rumors that Blanche had gotten pregnant. And for a daughter to have a child out of wedlock in the 1800s might have been more scandal than Madame Monnier was willing to risk. But we will never fully know her dark intentions. In hindsight, it is incredibly obvious that Marcel stood to gain from all of this. He likely agreed with his mother's disgusting plan because he knew that it would drive Blanche out of the will or kill her and leave him with everything to inherit once that these two monsters are truly a testament to how far greed and power will push someone, leading people even so far as to torment another person for nearly three decades. Sadly, this has brought us to the end of Blanche Manier's story, the woman who was locked up for 25 years. Comment below any thoughts you have about our case or any other videos you want to see us make. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.